Okay, so here I am at the Digital Commons, and I want to go over a couple of these. So um, I'll scroll down, and the first thing I'd actually mention to you or tell you to point out is take a look at, you know, just this map here. You know, these are the, um, the essentially where all of the theses that are currently there have been downloaded to. So as you can see from the, the map, and it's, it's quite fascinating, you know, there are only seven theses in there right now, but those seven theses have been downloaded a total of 424 times. And each of those dots on the map represent a different part of the world that the theses have been downloaded. You know, so as you can see, uh, you know, from Australia to um, all throughout Asia, all throughout Europe, at least the southern portion, central and southern Africa, uh, once from South America, and well, as you can see, a lot here in the U.S. Um, but you know, this is essentially some of the potential impact that your thesis can have. Um, you know, these are people, literally from all around the world, that are reading the research that our six-year students are doing uh, here at Sacred Heart. So it's it's interesting, and as you can see, uh, the most recent one that's up there is actually coming from Zambia. That's why it's sort of highlighted there. Uh, but when you look at the, the numbers, uh, that was the last uh, one of the uh, ones that were downloaded. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at two of these. So the first one I want to look at is this one by Alexandria. Um, so her dissertation is, or her thesis, sorry, as you can see, was on the importance of highly effective school library media programs on school learning environments. And when you go into her thesis, and specifically it's her chapter one that I want to look at, you'll see sort of a, a, a format, and it's a format that you're somewhat familiar with, um, at least portions of it. So first we start off with the introduction, and like every other chapter you've written, it's basically an introduction that sort of gives you a little bit of background, and in an ideal world will give you an overview of what's coming in the chapter. You'll notice that the next thing that she's got in here is the statement of the problem, and it's a relatively short statement of the problem, and that's by purpose. So you see there's a couple of paragraphs in there. One paragraph that basically gives you a little bit of background on uh, the study, and then one paragraph that sort of grounds it a little bit in the literature. And if you remember from um, what we talked about in class last uh, time we met, I had said that it would be one or two paragraphs that sort of, you know, provide a bit of background to the context and one or two paragraphs that provide a brief background or introduction to the literature. And you'll notice, like, here's her paragraph on the literature. And you can see it's not written like the literature review. You know, it's not that sort of, um, that critique of the literature that you see, and it's much more informal in nature. Then she transitions to her actual thesis study, where she provides a little bit of background to it. She indicates that she's going to be doing a, a, a case study. Um, she gives you the specific research questions. Um, she basically finishes that paragraph with why a case study was appropriate for her selection as a methodology. Then she moves into the summary. Now, the summary is going to have a couple of parts, two parts to be exact. The first part is, and you can see it in this paragraph here, it essentially summarizes what she said in chapter one. Then you'll note she has four more paragraphs, and each of those are a preview for what comes next. So she's got a preview, you know, in chapter two, I'm going to discuss this. In chapter three, I'm going to discuss this. In chapter four, I'm going to discuss this. And then in chapter five, I'm going to discuss this. At this stage of the process, so at essentially as of the end of EDL 690, you won't be able to write these two paragraphs yet because you haven't written chapters four and five yet, so you don't know what they're going to say. However, you will be able to write what you've said you know, foreshadowing what you're going to say in chapters two and three, and then just leave placeholders for four and five. You'll note that she finishes the section with the definition of terms. Now this essentially is either things that aren't pedestrian knowledge that are important for you to understand so that you are working, so the you as the reader, are working with the same sort of mindset or lens or framework that the author is working from or in some cases it's because the term 
has multiple definitions and you want the reader to ensure that they are working from a single definition, the definition that you want them to use essentially. So, um, and then basically that's the end of chapter one because as you can see here now she moves into chapter two. Looking at another example, and this one comes from uh, Laura Smith who wrote on uh, male gender disparity gap, does gender impact education? And as you can see, again, I've skipped over here to her chapter one, so it follows the front matter content that um, you've just downloaded and incorporated into the rest of your document. So she's got a paragraph here that provides an introduction, and it gives you a little bit of background. And then she has her statement of the problem, and as you can see, we've got a paragraph here, and she started, by the looks of it, more with the literature. And if you remember, one of the things we talked about in class was that some people will start first with the context because they sort of had a good sense as to what they were going to study first, um, you know, so the background to the context, and then gives a little bit of overview to the literature because, you know, essentially it was the literature that helped, you know, finalize or refine their thinking. In some cases students came to this with just a broad topic and that's sort of where um, you know Laura came from she had a broad topic that she was interested in so it was the literature that really gave her her dissertation or thesis idea sorry and then it was the um, you know then she provides a background to the context now you'll notice Unlike Alexandra, who took, you know, who, who basically was very concise in her writing and had a paragraph on each, as you can see here, Laura provides a little bit more detail. So she's got three paragraphs here. And the first two paragraphs really are more of the literature. Uh, the last paragraph is basically where she's starting to touch on a little bit more to the context. But then you move into, you know, as Alexandria did, uh, that thesis study section. You know, so the purpose of this thesis, and then she provides a little bit of background for it. Here's my research questions, um, and basically I used a case study for this, and you can see a little paragraph here as to why a case study was appropriate. And then she moves into her summary. So here's her paragraph that summarizes what she just told you. And then in chapter two, I'm going to be talking about these things. In chapter three, I'm going to be talking about these things. In chapter four and so on. In chapter five, et cetera, et cetera. And then she moves into her definition of terms again. And that concludes her chapter one. And then you can see here's chapter two starting off. So that's sort of the, the format that you have. Um, I don't believe I mentioned this when I went over the first example, but the definition of terms, some of those you may be able to write now. Most of them will likely be ones that you um, add at the end of this whole process. So once you've essentially written your chapters four and five, then you can go back and determine what terms you use that uh, were important for understanding the overall document and making sure that folks had a consistent understanding of those terms. Um, so like I say, you may be able to add a few of those right now, but for most of you, this will be something that you do at the end of the overall process. So it won't be something that you're submitting at the end of 690, but something that you submit at the end of 691.